Hey, this is Toe 2 Bravo. And we're going to do a video today on our Carbon Express Pile Driver Crossbow. Uh, we've been using that for quite some time now. And uh, we have hunted West Virginia and Pennsylvania archery seasons with that crossbow. And there's some good, and there's some bad, and there's some things that I think I'm going to do to improve the overall use and comfort of uh, that crossbow. Alright, so there she is. The Carbon Express Pal Driver. Uh, this year, like I've mentioned earlier in the intro, I have hunted with this bad boy in West Virginia and PA. So, let's talk about what was uh, some of the experiences that I had with it. First off, this was a display model that I bought from Dumbs. It was the only model left, so it was already built. So, what I found was, as I used this more and more, uh, all together, probably right around 150 shots through it between just practicing and zeroing and, and actual hunting with it, I found that some of the, uh, some portions of it did become loose and need to be retightened. Uh, so that's to be expected on something that you don't build yourself. So, lesson to be learned there is I probably should have brought it home um, and gone over all of the connections a little more thorough. I did go over some of the more prominent uh, connection points like up here in the, the front portion here and those were all fairly tight and I haven't had any issues with those but I did have to go back on some of the other portions of it and uh, apply a little Loctite to them and uh, make sure that we didn't have any more loose uh, portions of this crossbow, any parts that were loose or rattling. Next thing that we'll cover is with the scope that comes with the uh, crossbow uh, as part of the kit, uh, in my opinion is fairly cheap and uh, it does function uh, it will do the job if you can't afford anything else or if you're on the fence and you're not sure that you want to uh, continue to crossbow hunt you want to go back to compound then I wouldn't do anything with it but I think I will upgrade this before I get to the next season because what I found was with temperature changes um, fluctuations in the temp for me caused my point of impact to change uh, on this particular scope uh, as much as five inches uh, the funny thing is it didn't drift or didn't change uh, left or right, but it most certainly changed on the point of impact on uh, up or down. Uh, so I would take it out on an 80 degree day or a 70 degree day and I would shoot it and uh, it would be dead on. And then I would take it out and shoot it on a 20, 20 degree day or a 30 degree day and my point of impact would change significantly, usually higher. I did have several instances where it was lower. I did go over, because I know the first thing that folks are going to think is, you know, did you check all of your points uh, where it is connected and where it's cinched down. I did check all of these. These are all Loctited. There's no play here. There was no play here. And there was no play where it mounts underneath here to the, uh, to the crossbow itself. There's no play here at all. So I don't think it was anything moving. I just think that this uh, cheaper scope uh, was affected by the temperature fluctuations. Uh, that was my experience. Uh, your mileage may differ, but uh, that's what I experienced with my particular crossbow model here. This hand grip here was extremely uncomfortable. It's too wide. It just feels cumbersome. I could never never get a good nice, nice feel for it. I understand why it's there. It's to keep your hand away from all these moving parts as the crossbow fires. But uh, I did not like that. They could have come up with a better design there. Another thing that I did not like, and we'll stand it up, is this hook bottom on this uh, stock. Uh, I think they could have done better with just a normal, you know, triangle type shape stock without all this unnecessary crap right here on this. Because this, as you're walking through the woods, you're catching on everything in the woods with this, this angle here. I think what I'll do is I think I'm just going to cut this off right here and uh, round it off. It would be... Uh, Far more, far more functional for me. I thought that was uh, a really stupid design there. I did like the 
riser here on the on the stock itself. It was very nice, functioned well. The grip is very nice. The trigger is nice. I had no problems with the trigger. Um, overall, the crossbow is fast. It is effective as long as you stay on top of the cheap scope and make sure that your zero is on before you head out to the woods. It is very effective. Um, it is heavy though. If you're not familiar with crossbows and you're thinking about hunting with crossbows, keep in mind that this compared to your compound bow, uh, there is a significant difference. Um, pumping this through the woods, uh, if you're, especially if you're going to go deep, um, not necessarily here in PA when I hunted, I didn't have to go very far, but in West Virginia I was going up and down some, uh, some hills and some valleys and some ravines, and uh, this does get cumbersome after a while. Uh, you're catching on a lot of stuff. Overall, I like the crossbow a lot. Um, it's reliable. Uh, it's easy to use when you're sitting in the tree stand. Um, it's already loaded. Just kind of point and shoot, know your limitations, know your hash marks. Uh, the way it worked out for me, uh, I'm not going to go and show you a picture of uh, the different hash marks in here for the, the different ranges. Uh, you've all seen them before. Center mass, uh, zero, to, zero to about 20... 26 yards, 27 yards. I didn't have to make any adjustments. Um, between the first and second uh, crosshairs on this was 30 yards. The second uh, set of crosshairs was 40 yards and the third set was 50 yards and I didn't go any further than that. It was uh, dead nuts accurate uh, at those distances for me. Um, overall, uh, I liked it. I will hunt with it again next year. Uh, but like I mentioned, I'm going to upgrade the scope and I'm going to round off the, uh, the buttstock portion of it, of it there. So, uh, with this, uh, this year I, I did take a very nice buck here in PA and I'll, I'll put some pictures in. I wasn't able to get any video, uh, because it happened, uh, after work, I just decided to come home. I had an hour to spare before between the time that I got home and dark. Uh, it's about a 12 to 15 minute walk to my tree stand into the woods. So, uh, you know, it was just kind of a whim type of thing. I had seven does come through once I was settled in the stand and then I had uh, this buck come through probably about 10 minutes later. So it all panned out. Uh, it's a very effective bow. As long as you stay on top of the uh, the uh, scope and uh, the fluctuation on the point of impact due to temperature changes. So overall, that's my um, that's my review of the Carbon Express Pile Driver. Uh, if I had to give it a scaled rating on a one to ten, one being the worst, ten being the best, um, I would give this bow probably I would give this crossbow a solid uh, I'd give it a solid eight. Uh, as the crossbow itself, uh, if I was going to, um, I would give it a solid eight for the crossbow. Um, the scope obviously would probably be somewhere in the realm of about a four or five, but the crossbow itself is a solid eight. Uh, like I said, I don't like the foregrip and I don't like the uh, that hook portion at the bottom of the buttstock that I spoke about earlier. So I store it in a Plano case here. It's the uh, Spire. Plano case, uh, nothing special, but it's a, you know, it uh, it serves its purpose. So we'll probably see me break this out in the spring, just to shoot it a little bit. I'll probably have the new scope on by then, and then we'll uh, be getting prepared for maybe turkey and uh, getting ready for the 2020 uh, deer season. So this is Toto Bravo. I appreciate you watching. I hope you got some valuable information out of this. And uh, until I see you again.